Well, we made it through the first night on Peleliu. Hell of a first day, though. The next morning, me, Baker, and Devereaux was in the same shell hole. Shells were coming over and mortars were landing in front of us. Every time a shell would go over, you could hear this loud scream. One of them came awful close and I ducked down. Lieutenant Baker says, Ellis, if you hear the noise, then it's too late to duck down. It ain't going to hit you. Lieutenant Baker, I says, I wasn't ducking that one. I was ducking the next one. Baker thought that was funny. Later on in the campaign, Lieutenant Baker was on the front lines with some bazooka men. A couple of Jap hand grenades landed nearby and riddled him with small pieces of shrapnel. Me and Devereaux drug him back to the first aid station, and that was the last time I saw him. So there we were on the second day, about 500 yards up the beach, near the edge of the airfield. And a doggone warning came down along the lines. Everyone put on your gas mask. The enemy may be using gas on us. Oh shit, I says. We threw our gas masks away, Jim, my buddy Devereaux says. I'll go back and see what I can find, I says. A couple hundred yards back on the beach, I found a couple piles of gas mask containers around the, some of the dead soldiers. So I grabbed a couple of them and headed back up the beach again to my squad. Look here, Devereaux. I got you one and I got me one. We'll be all right now, Jim, he says. I got back down in the doggone hole and opened up my case. Didn't find a gas mask. It was full of apples, yellow apples. I had a gas mask case full of yellow apples and... That's the best thing that happened to me on Peleliu. We had apples to eat for two days. Not long after that, we had to make a charge across the airfield. Private First Class Fish got a crazy idea. He says, when we get over there, I'm going to investigate those two buildings across the airstrip, he says. Are you nuts? I says. When we cross there... Where the shells were exploding. We took off and headed over to those two aeronautical buildings. When he joined us on the other side, he had two regimental Japanese flags, the ones with the big rays that extend from the center, and about a half a dozen of the personal flags with just the red circle on the white field. Now, fish always looked like a Jap to me because his skin had turned yellow after taking so much adabrine to fight off the effects of malaria. Oh, we all had malaria back then. If you didn't take your adabrine, you'd get really sick. The Japs probably didn't shoot him when he was in the barracks because he looked like one of them. Crazy fish would do anything. He had a good combination of courage and luck. If you had guts, then you needed some luck to survive. He gave one of the regimental flags to Lou Walt, and the other one he gave to Major Gordon Gale. So, I didn't wear a helmet or a gas mask on Peleliu. Later on in the battle, I had a buddy right next to me stick his head up over the ridge. A bullet pierced his helmet and his head. Died instantly. Helmet didn't help him much. His name was Matlock. I was about to stick my head up, but after his came down with a hole in it, I thought, hell, I'm not going to stick mine up there. A few days into the battle, I, I can't remember exactly what day we were facing a cave armed with high-powered machine gun. I crawled over to Gunnery Sergeant Gilbert and says, There's a cave above this ridge. From that position, they're picking us off. One Jap could shoot ten of us before we ever get to him. He's too well protected. If you want us to get over this ridge and take this cave, I tell you what we should do. Let's get a hold of some of those smoke grenades and throw them all at the same time, and then under the cover of the smoke, we'll charge the cave. 
Well, Gilbert says that's a good idea. We threw ten live grenades over and then a bunch of smoke grenades. We charged through the smoke and discovered there was only one jack firing in this cave. We hit the hole with bazookas and that was the end of him. The next day, we had established an observation post to call in artillery. My outfit had a phone up there and we were manning a machine gun. We had a BAR man and a couple of riflemen too. We were firing so much that we ran out of machine gun ammunition, so we used the phone to call back to our sergeant in the weapons platoon, Sergeant Gilbert. He was about a couple hundred yards back of us, so he brought up some ammunition. ammunition. Do you believe they gave him the Silver Star for doing that? We were on the front lines, firing the weapons calling in the artillery, and he brings up some ammunition and gets the Silver Star. Him and Lieutenant Jones, or Johns, I forget his name, both ended up with Silver Stars. There were men who fought on the lines day after day, living in pure hell, and never got any medals. And these two officers, who spent a lot of time in the rear, end up with Silver Stars. That's what you call scratching each other's back. Oh well, what are you gonna do?